Hi, I'm attorney John Redmond. Today we're going to be talking about what to do if you've been involved in an automobile accident. We're going to present other segments as well, which present other aspects and facets of personal injury claims, what to do and helping you understand your rights and how to handle and what to know and what to do all along the way involving claims, time frames, what to expect, and basically how to help navigate and understand this world. I've been doing this 25 plus years. I'm very passionate about it. I have a very um, successful track record. I'm very proud of what we've done. I'm most proud of the fact that my clients consistently give me and my whole legal crew an excellent, excellent, consistently high rating. And that allows me to, um, to have learned a lot and I'm, and I'm delighted to share with you answers to a lot of the questions we get. Because we get so many questions, I want to jump right in and answer your question. So, let's get started. First question I got here is, what do I need to know if I've just been in an accident? Well, the first thing, which most of you probably know, is safety. Many people don't know that after an accident, you not only are allowed to, but you are required to move your cars out of the lanes of travel, uh, especially if there is a danger, a risk of further accidents happening. Be sure that the occupants in your vehicle, including yourself, uh, are also um, attended to. So if there's any uh, risk of further harm happening, you might need to move your cars a whole lot quicker. But definitely you are permitted to move your cars out of the lane to travel if there's any risk of further harm and danger. If it's a very quiet street and there's very little traffic, it's a good idea, if you could do it safely, to have pictures taken of the vehicles after the accident uh, in order to be sure there's no argument about where did the vehicles end up after the impact, especially if you think there's going to be an argument about who was at fault. These pictures can be very useful. Once you've uh, moved the vehicles or taken the pictures and moved the vehicles, you want to be sure that um, any medical attention, if it's needed, is called for. Call 911 for the police, call 911 for an ambulance and medical attention. After that, you're going to want to be sure you are contacting medical, excuse me, um, sharing information with the other drivers. If you've contacted um, 911 uh, in case you need an ambulance and you've contacted the police, certainly you need to be behave yourselves like um, uh, gentlemen and, uh, and ladies because tensions will run high after an accident. If the other driver's not being well behaved, well you might need to sit in your car, you might need to lock your windows, but hopefully people will behave themselves even though it's a, an unfortunate situation. Next question. If the police ask for a statement, what should I do? Well, obviously, you want to cooperate with the police. And if, and if you really believe you're at fault or you did something that you think that helped cause the accident, if you were changing the radio station or lighting a cigarette and you got distracted, yeah, you, you know, you can admit fault. But if you're not sure that you're at fault and you're really not sure if something you did might have caused fault in the accident, don't be so quick to admit fault. Sometimes after an accident, a very traumatic event, if it's a dramatic accident, don't be so quick to judge yourself. Um, maybe it's best to say, I'm not sure what happened when you're not sure. I don't want anybody to lie. I don't want anybody to make up stories. But if you're not sure it wasn't your fault, then say, I'm not sure it was my fault. I'm really not sure what happened. Uh, next question. It's a related question. What if someone from the insurance company asked me to give a statement, a recorded statement? Should I do that? My advice to people is do not give recorded statements to insurance companies. Don't even give statements. Why? Well, on the one hand, you just want to tell them the truth, tell them what you remember. On the other hand, even if it's your own insurance company, I don't trust insurance companies. 
I make claims against them on a regular basis. I sue them when I have to, but they are not your friend. They have a lot of warm and fuzzy TV commercials. They tell you they're your good neighbor. They tell you you're in good hands. I disagree. They will use that information later on to try and mince words with you, and they will use that information to try and pay you less than you deserve, even if it's your own insurance company. Don't give them any statement. Tell them you'll think about it. Tell them you'll get back to them. Then contact a lawyer who comes highly recommended. Contact a lawyer who represents people who are injured, who gets excellent reviews from clients, excellent reviews from other lawyers. Go to martindale.com, attorneys.com, avo.com, Google, and find a lawyer who gets excellent reviews. I'm proud to say I got the very best reviews from all of those different uh, places. And the thing I'm most proud of is my client reviews at every site you look at. So I'll tell you don't give those statements, and I'll tell you to refer those insurance adjusters to me and I will be happy to help them and I'll be happy to give them the information they're entitled to including the information that they need in order to adjust the claim. Now they can look at the property damage to your car and only point out the damage from the accident. Be careful not to point out damage that was there before the accident. Next question. I didn't feel hurt after the accident but the next day I felt pretty bad. Is that unusual? That's a great question happens all the time. The insurance companies, remember I told you not to trust them, they will often use that at trial to say you weren't hurt in the accident. They say you told the police officer you weren't hurt. Now you're making a claim for a lot of money. That's what we call disingenuous, which is a fancy word for saying they're lying. People get hurt in an accident, except it takes a while for that hurt to make itself known. Why? Because muscles and ligaments get pulled and strained and the fibers in the muscle and the fibers and ligaments get yanked and ripped in an accident. Swelling has to occur. It's the swelling of those fibers and muscles that, that squishes on uh, nerve fibers and um, that takes hours and hours. Plus, if it's a fairly scary accident, You've got adrenaline pumping through your system, and that is why people at the time of the accident, they're not feeling any pain. They're not feeling anything. But hours later, or the next day, and sometimes two days later, that's when they're really starting to feel it. They might need surgery. They might be hurting just for a few weeks or a few months, but they are hurt, and they don't even know it for a day or two later. Judges shouldn't even allow the, the insurance companies to use that statement right after the accident that they don't feel any pain at that moment, um, with all due respect. But insurance companies know that people on the jury will use that as a reason to say the person wasn't hurt and not give somebody who was really hurt money. Well, we've run out of time for this segment. But I hope this gives you a good idea of some of the basics. I hope this answered some of your questions. Come back to my website. Catch me on Power of Attorney. Go to www.johnredmondpoa.com. You can watch all kinds of segments about all different kinds of law, not just personal injury. And otherwise, stay in tuned. Stay tuned in, I mean. And help me help you be empowered about the law. I'm John Redman. Please come visit me if you need an attorney for any reason. And if I can't personally help you, I'll look forward to helping you find that attorney who can. My number is 504-433-5550. 504-433-5550. Thanks for spending this time with me. Hi, I'm John Redman. Welcome back. We've got some more Q&A or questions and answers about personal injury claims. Questions that come from former clients, ongoing clients, 
people out there in uh, internet land who send in their questions because uh, they might have a case or maybe they had a case and they just want to know simple they have simple questions really good questions and so uh, part of the series that we're doing here is just to answer all these different questions we've grouped them into categories so the category we're still in right now is stuff that happens in the initial phases after an accident hiring a lawyer what to expect so uh, we've already answered a bunch of questions. This is uh, this is the second uh, segment of uh, a, a group of questions. So here we go. We continue. Uh, next question: um, Do I really need an attorney to assist me after an accident, and why? It's a great question. It's a common question. Many people never hire an attorney. They just deal directly with the insurance adjuster, try to get their property paid for, get paid for their medical treatments, the medical uh, treatments that they go out and get on their own, and get paid something to pay for all that, and maybe a little something for their pain and suffering. Most people, I don't, I don't know if it's most people, the statistics are um, hard to get a hold of, uh, but many people uh, take the smarter path in my biased opinion and they do go out and hire a lawyer and um, and I'll tell you why I think that's a smarter path. Some years back I believe it was Allstate, Allstate, the good hands people, they prepared a training manual for their adjusters and the training manual wrote in there and this training manual ended up being discovered. It was definitely not for public consumption, but the training manual said that if somebody calls you and says they've been in an accident and um, they have uh, injuries and they want to see about their claim, part of the training manual, and I actually uh, wrote a, uh, a piece about it. I actually published uh, something about this as well, but lawyers across the country wrote something about this. The training manual said, to these future adjusters, do your best to convince the person not to get a lawyer. Because if they get a lawyer, um, they're going to end up paying a multiple. I can't remember if it said three times more, five times more, seven times more for the claim. So if they don't get a lawyer, then it'll save Allstate a ton of money. So what does that mean? Well. And my personal belief, doing this over 25 years, is that someone who doesn't have a lawyer, you're not going to get the respect you deserve. You're going to get a small fraction of what you deserve. I believe it's going to be more like one-fifth or one-seventh of what you deserve. So imagine if your claim is, um, if they're willing to pay you, let's say, $10,000 for your claim, well then it's probably worth 50000 or 70000 that same manual says, tell that person that trial lawyer is just going to take a bite out of the claim when they can just get all the money and not have to pay a lawyer. Well, that would be fine if they actually paid unrepresented injured people the same as they paid people who are represented. So, it's a long answer and I'm trying to give brief short answers. But the short answer is, as long as you get a halfway decent lawyer, to represent you, the insurance company is going to pay far more. So even if, even after you take out for attorney fees, you're coming out way ahead, way ahead. So you don't have to come to see John Redmond, me, but find a good lawyer, find somebody who has good ratings on the internet, good ratings at attorneys.com, good ratings at avo.com, and that lawyer is going to get you far more for your injuries what it's worth. Nobody's trying to be greedy here. Get what it's worth. Next question. Um, does it cost anything for a consultation with a lawyer and can I bring my kids? Excellent question. We love kids around here. I got a bunch of kids. Most of the people who work for me have children. Sometimes they're here when their um, daycare uh, falls through or when they get off early from school. We welcome kids here in our lobby. We have books for the kids, uh, a little play area for the kids. Bring your kids if you need to bring your kids. Bring your kids if, uh, if you need to. Now, I don't need you to bring your child here, even if your child's been in the accident and your child's four or five years old. I count on the parents to tell me how serious the injuries are. Now, if your child has a visible injury, we are going to want to get good pictures of it. 
okay? But um, how much is the consultation? Well, in the personal injury world, no charge for the consultation. Even if you come and you talk to me and you decide, for whatever reason, I don't want the, uh, you don't want to hire me, John Redmond. That's fine, I'm grateful for the opportunity. If, uh, if how much um, does it cost if uh, we together decide we're going to work together? No money out of your pocket. The only way I get paid is if I'm successful in handling your case. If I'm able to get the insurance for the other at-fault driver to pay, only then am I paid. Um, next question. Will the attorney help me find a doctor? What if I don't have health insurance? Okay. The short answer is yes. And even if you don't have health insurance, we'll help you find a doctor or a clinic where you will get excellent medical care. Uh, whether you're rich or poor, you are going to get excellent medical care. And it's going to be better than you're going to get with your um, uh, local clinic down the street. The local clinic down the street or the big medical facility down the street where they treat tennis elbow, athlete's foot, runny noses, everything and everything under the sun, they're not going to give as good a care. In my non, I'm not a medical doctor, but I work with these excellent doctors. It's not as good a medical care as the doctors who treat this type of injury, car accident injury, sprains, strains, uh, slips and falls, every day. And they're excellent and they will work with us to make sure that they explain the injuries properly so the insurance adjusters on the other side understand it. This is excellent medical care and they understand that they have to treat you guys properly and with courtesy and respect. Unlike a lot of other doctors you might meet somewhere who you know, they think they're high and mighty because they're doctors. They know that they have to treat you guys with courtesy and respect. Otherwise, they're going to have a problem with me. So, um, they don't ask, uh, if you have health insurance, they want your health insurance information because um, that helps make sure that they will be um, uh, paid. Now, they know that uh, they are owed money and I'm going to guarantee payment no matter what, but that's a risk that I take, okay? Um, you may be asked to sign documents as well, but you don't have to take money out of your pocket while the case is pending, okay? So I want you to get excellent medical care. Your health is number one. The case is a distant second, and that's one of the things I'm very proud of, is we want you to get excellent medical care. We want you to get excellent legal care. And because of what we've been able to do for our clients, we get excellent results. As good as anybody else can, we really believe. Next question. Uh, how does the attorney charge for services? Well, we mentioned that if we take the case, we charge a contingency fee. I don't know if I call it a contingency fee, but a contingency fee means I get paid when I produce results. If the case is not successful, my time and my money invested in prosecuting the case are lost to me. The legal team that, I, that work as my employees, I pay them their salaries no matter what. If we're successful in pursuing the case, I get a fee which is a percentage of what uh, is paid by the other side. If I don't have to file a suit, and 19 times out of 20 we don't have to file a suit, then the fees are one-third of whatever we collect. Also what's paid out of that money is doctor bills and costs. But one promise I make to you and pretty much everybody with very few exceptions is the client, that's you if you give me the opportunity, will put more money in his or her pocket than the attorney. Not many attorneys say that, but I've been saying it for 20 plus years. I want you to um, be happy. I want you to be satisfied. I hope you're going to be very happy and very satisfied. And I've been able to deliver on that promise with very few exceptions for many years. Um, I'm willing to invest time. I pay the money that it takes to um, get everything done on the case that needs to get done. And if we go to file a lawsuit and go all the way to trial, it could be a lot, a lot of money. But I'm able to do that. 
uh, because if I believe in you and you believe in me, I'm willing to take those financial risks. And then if we're successful, then, uh, and typically we are, then that means I'm going to have a very happy client. And what I hope comes out of all that is not only a very happy client in you, but someone who's my newest advertiser, who's going to recommend me to family and friends. If you Google me, you'll see what I mean, because you will see a lot of happy clients. Let's see. Um, come visit me here at this website or on this podcast for future segments. We'll talk about how long do these cases normally take, which, if it's not a serious accident, it's only a few months, but I'll expand on that. Uh, we'll talk about the difference between filing suit and not filing suit and why most of the time we don't have to file the suit and incur the cost and have the fee increase from one-third to 40%. We'll talk about a lot of other things, but most important, we'll talk about uh, the questions that come from viewers and listeners just like you. I'm John Redman, and thank you for spending this time with me. I look forward to talking with you again soon.